Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Saricolia coming to you again with another episode uh, of this um, uh, podcast, Age of Heroes. Uh, and I hope you you enjoyed the holiday. Well, in this case, the Thanksgiving and Black Friday and, you know, all that wonderful time that we spend as a family. And, you know, I hope you, you enjoy the time. And also you, you purchase a lot of things, you know, uh, that's the time we all purchase a lot of things. Uh, but um uh, I want to talk about something that it happens. Uh, you know, I haven't really talked about a lot of things. I've been kind of slow, uh, of course, because of the time that I spend with my family, doing other things, getting ready for other things. I've been busy as well. And, you know, just taking time to rest. But there's something that I just recently read uh, that was actually on Monday. There was a a uh, actually a some news uh, by Newsrama. Uh, where they're talking about, um, in this case, uh, Denny O'Neill, uh, Dennis O'Neill, uh, is going to be honored, uh, for pursuing causes of peace and justice. That's the, uh, this, uh, you know, the title that they had in this, in this news, uh, uh, piece, uh, at the presidential library. So he's going to be honored. Now, uh, for those who do not know, uh, and if you do not know, of course, you know, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Denny O'Neill, uh, Dennis O'Neill is, uh, one of the most influential, uh, comic book writers of uh, this generation or the past generation. Uh, one that has defined uh, a character like Batman. I'm talking about Batman, uh, Green Arrow, uh, even um, Green Lantern in a way that was never done before. Uh, Danny O'Neill has been involved in comics since the 60s. Uh, when he started with Marvel Comics, he, he worked for Charlton Comics. Uh, then he ended up in DC Comics uh, in the 60s in a time where uh, DC was actually trying to combat, trying to fight Marvel's uh, invasion. Uh, with Marvel was really taking the, they were the, they were the spearhead that were taking over comic books. You know, they were they, they, it was expanding. It was exploding under, of course, the guidance of uh, Stanley. Uh, it was uh, it was a great time in the sixties. So DC wanted to have that age, at least wanted to recover that age. So they brought uh, Dick Giordano, and Dick Giordano uh, also brought a lot of the people that worked for him or under him uh, at, uh, in this case, at Charleston Comics, which is uh, technically Marvel Comics. And uh, they came, and uh, Daniel Neal came to work for DC, and that mark one of the best periods for Batman stories, but also for other characters in the DC universe. Uh, Danny O'Neill, um, uh, you know, after he left the Navy, he went into writing things for newspapers. He's from Missouri. So he was doing some, you know, some things here and that. He never thought that he would end up being a writer for comic books. Uh, he got his chance at Marvel Comics that he was hired by Stanley. And of course, the, you know, the rest is history. So when he came into DC Comics in, in, a, in a period where DC Comics wanted the edge, you know, he got the opportunity to start working for a lot of stuff uh, for different characters, uh, different uh, personas. And he ended up, of course, doing a lot of stuff for Batman. Man, Brave and the Bold, and, and and so on and so on. Detective Comics. So he was very important in a time that Batman needed to be redefined. Uh, Batman has always been a character that um, that that has a, a really rich history. He was created with a dark tone. Of course, in the fifties, well, in the sixties, there was a, a bit of a uh, you know. Also, during the time of the show uh, on TV, there was a time where they, they, there was a lot of kind of like a funkiness, uh, a lot of. Um, a lot of softness to the character that really kind of make it kind of like a joke. Uh, so then you knew brought the character back to the roots to make it more uh, back to the darker roots, but also back to to something that is that you can feel and touch and something that you can understand uh, and the deepness and the struggles, uh, emotional struggles that he has to deal with on a daily basis. So he did it. You know, of course, he's very well known during that time. Of course, a lot of people remember that Batman and the 60s and the 70s, they remember uh, Neil Adams. Uh, they remember him as the main artist of the time. But even though uh, Neil Adams was uh, recognized as the great artist of the time for Batman, it was Danny O'Neill, the one actually shaping the story. So, you know, in collaboration, they're both together. Of course, we have this tendency nowadays, and it's always been the case, to give more credit to the artists. But uh, the writers have a big, big part in the story and the development of the story and the creation of the story. So Danny O'Neill shaped the story. He created some of the characters like Ras al Ghul, 
he he shaped Batman in a way. Uh, many of the characters that he created during that time, he gave him so imp- uh, so much importance. And of course, then he became an editor in chief uh, all the way to till two thousand so of Batman stories. And of course, we get some of the greatest Batman stories of modern times uh, are all under his pen or under his supervision. So uh, he's such an intrinsic part. So now, of course, he is going to be honor. Uh, like I said, the title of this excerpt uh, in the news is pursuing causes of peace and justice at the you know uh, in Atlanta it's going to be I think December 7 December 8th at the Jimmy Carter uh, presidential library in Atlanta he's going to speak there uh, he's going to be honored uh, for his lifetime achievements in, in pursuing those causes of peace and justice he's always been one thing I can say about Daniel Neal he's has always brought a lot of uh, problems in society to the forefront during that time uh, in the 60s and 70s, there was not such a thing prior to that. You know, comics were more, more about stories. You know, yes, in the in the 40s, 50s, there was, uh, you know, the causes was the war, you know, the Second War. And a lot of the, the, the writers and artists of the time, you know, they, they talk about problems that happened in Germany, problems that happened with the Second War. So that was a social, there was, that was the social element. But most of the stories were about, you know, stories of daily lives. It was just simple stories. But... Um, during the 60s, uh, uh, in one of the one, it was Denny O'Neill. Uh, he believed in many of these causes. And, of course, DC wanted to have the edge because, of course, as you know, Marvel was really touching a lot of different subjects. So uh, Denny O'Neill had the opportunity to really write about what he wanted to do. And one of the the, the, writer, the stories that he created, of course, Green Arrow and Green Lantern, uh, which is a phenomenal story I recommend to anyone uh, that's uh, you know, a wonderful run. Uh, he talk a lot, talk about a lot of social issues in his in that famous run. Of course, talk about about drug abuse. You have problems about racism in America, and you see that there's a counterpart. You know, there is a you know you see Green Arrow as a leftist vision, while uh, you know Green Lantern is a more conservative. So you see two different sides, uh, kind of fighting. They're working together and trying to get with you know solutions to the problems that they have in the comic books. The stories were, you know, good, not only because they were good stories, not only because they were good, you know, you have good characters and good writing, but also because they talk about elements of social justice, about situations, about the, the, the you know, the economy, about, the, you know, racism in America, about, you know, drug addiction and the, uh, the, uh, the epidemic uh, outbreak that was happening in that time, but also talking about the environment, you know, how to save the environment. All of that, you know, have shaped characters like, you know, Green Arrow for years to come and Green Lantern. And of course, Batman stories, we also saw some of that. So yes, he has always been in his writing. He has always put that. And one of the biggest parts of that is because he believes in what he speaks. He believes in those themes. He believes in those. And they are extremely important. And I think he has stand up his ground. Well, other writers, uh, they were just simply doing stories just for fun, you know, for entertainment, but without that need, that purpose. He believed in what he wrote. And, and that's the reason why he's very successful. And he even said it, if you get, to, and I'm going to get the link so you can read that in the excerpt he's talking about that he believed on those things. There were other writers during that time that they did it just uh, to copy and pretty much what he was doing, but no one was as successful as he was uh, because he really believed in this causes. He believed in, in, in these things and what he stand for and he wrote it and he poured his soul into the stories. Uh, and I believe so. I believe that the stories like comic book stories should be, uh, even though it's about entertainment, also they have to talk, you know, talk about social, uh, you know, some subjects that we need to hear. Uh, and he said, you know, they, I believe that there's a lot of problems that we were facing then and we're still facing now. And sometimes we, you know, we try to face or, or we try to solve these problems. But, you know, uh, a part of our society doesn't accept those changes. You know, we are already set in our ways and children are in a different position where they can believe in something and they can change the world. They maybe they they don't have the power now, but maybe in the future they can have the answers uh, for those problems that we're facing as a nation and as people. And I believe that that's the important thing about comic book stories. Uh, unfortunately, comic books nowadays are becoming more about touching. Uh, they're more directed towards an older audience. But I believe that comic books should always have been that center about children. Uh, children should be at the center. And I think that's the biggest problem with comic book stories nowadays. 
it's centered towards an older audience and that's the, the 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 target you know that's the the audience that has been targeted and that's the audience that they're pursuing because they've been the ones that they used to read comics but we don't see more kids coming into comics and it's because they're not stories that can persuade them to come into comic book stories you know they are more persuaded by video games and by the social media but think by those effects um, but those tools but it's because they have their you know the the, the in this case the companies are targeting them uh, and I feel that the comic book companies uh, the publishers are not doing the same thing they do it through the, the con you know through the, the television through the shows through the movies but they're not doing it through comic books and I think that there's something that the comic book industry needs to look back into it and, you know, I believe that comic book stories should be about comic book stories. Yes, about entertainment, uh, first and foremost. And in, in, the, in that, uh, in that in the interview, he said the same thing. That should be the first priority. It should be entertain people. It's to create good stories that people like. But if the second part, the second element to it should be that you have to talk about things that make people think. And if people get entertained and at the same time think about things that we're dealing with as society and looking for solutions to those problems, you know, then, you know, you did a good job. I think those two elements are go hand in hand but the first one needs to be important which is entertaining people you know giving good stories for people to read and the second one has to do with you know giving some meat to it for people to really after the story ends after you know you finish the, the issue or the storyline then you have to think about what's next you know what are the lessons that you have learned through this and I believe that's important I think that that's one of the biggest problems and issues that we face today in our society is that we want just the quick solution to our problems we want just the we are fixed you want the, we want the quick fix we want just to be entertained and move on and forget about everything we don't care about what's going on around us and but it's important to 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 think you know and we need to be a society that thinks i feel that uh, uh we have become a society that think less less and less yeah we create a lot of things and we are creative and we use a lot of technology but we're not as creative in the sense of uh, finding solutions to problems and that's the reason why we see so much turbulence in our nation and so much doubt and fear because people are not really looking for answers or they don't know what to look or because you know first of all we're not a society that believes in studying and getting better and preparing ourselves for something better and to think and analyze things and that's the reason why some people don't even believe nowadays and that there is you know global you know uh warming or, or things like that they don't believe that there's this and that they believe that everything is okay some people don't even believe that there's racism in america so people don't believe that there is uh, inequality in this country so people believe they believe all this because first of all they just don't find the truth they don't look for the truth because they're not informed they they prefer entertainment that is dull and stupid and i feel that that's some is this a service to us or to ourselves to our children you know we need to be aware of these things and you know i i, I you know in this case i'll praise danny o'neill i believe that is uh, you know is well deserved i believe that you know he's a big part of comics I mean, people are always going to think about people like adams you know neil adams as a creator but in my opinion was danny o'neill it was his signature writing that really shaped uh batman for years to come and up to this day we benefit from the stories that he created and from the the way he shaped the character and his universe so you know really very very proud of him and you know i feel that you know he deserved it and you know he deserves more recognition from the community from the comic book community so uh you know thank you for listening to this podcast you know uh please like comment and subscribe if you're following on youtube uh please share this podcast with your friends you can download uh the podcast and your you know through uh itunes or you can do it through um android device and um just let me know how you feel about this you can leave your comments below uh how you what do you think about um, this recognition to danny o'neill uh let me know um uh, also uh don't forget to to you know to follow my channel and also if you are interested in supporting this channel you can check out my uh in this case my patreon account uh, uh, you'll be more than glad if you're able to support this channel it'd be it'd be a lot you know a lot of help so once again thank you and god bless you i'll talk to you again bye bye